Welcome to the KZGN News. Today we'll bring you news about wildfires in the Sequoias, the city's proposed new wastewater treatment plant, news from the Inukern Airport, and today's KZGN Talking Points editorial. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inukern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. Hello, I'm Tom Whitney. Thanks for joining us for the news affecting Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. In fire news from last weekend, lightning strikes ignited a dozen new fires across the Sequoia National Forest and Giant Sequoia National Monument over the past few days. The Gray Fire is the largest at four acres and is burning near Gray Meadow in the Golden Trout Wilderness, approximately 15 miles northeast of Springville on the Western Divide Ranger District. Firefighters will suppress the fire with the least impact to the land. They will stop the spread to contain it within a designated perimeter boundary made up of natural barriers and remain on site to ensure it stays within that boundary. At this time, there are no trail or road closures in the Western Divide Ranger District. Firefighters will work to suppress all of the lightning caused fires as safely and quickly as possible. Storms continue to pass through the Southern Sierra Mountains and bring the threat of lightning and more fires. Lightning caused fires can go undetected for days or weeks until forest materials dry enough to allow flames to spread to the surface. Businesses are asked to call ahead to check on conditions and obtain weather forecasts prior to travel in the mountains. As the City of Ridgecrest closes in on a recommendation for a new city wastewater treatment plant, here's what Modesto is doing. Modesto's wastewater treatment plant is currently undergoing a $150 million upgrade. The plan is that the upgraded facility will allow wastewater to be purified enough to meet the state standard for agricultural use. Athena Hansen runs the Del Puerto Water District and has cited that a quarter of the district's 45,000 farm acres are fallow this year. The city of Modesto produces millions of gallons of wastewater every day. The North Valley Regional Recycle Water Program will be the largest urban to agriculture water recycling project in the state. Recycled water will still cost four or five times the normal price. The district lack of water has growers jumping at the chance. Del Puerto Water District is entirely reliant on federal reservoirs. But the record low snowpack has seen that source cut off for the last two years. The project still needs to gather a handful of permits, but the system could be in place in as little as three years. Hansen thinks that Del Puerto's project could become a model in the effort to achieve groundwater sustainability. Ridgecrest's new plant could run in the $45 to $70 million price range, depending on the type and the location. Locations being considered are where the current plant is on the base and a location by the city's original plant on Connelline Road by the animal shelter. City staff hopes to have a potential report with a consultant's recommendations to the council by October. In news from the Inukern Airport, they are announcing that they are in pursuit of federal grants that could help bring back air service to the valley. Airport General Manager Scott Seymour is seeking $50,000 in cash matching funds to acquire a $500,000 grant through the Department of Transportation. They have a small communities air service program. According to Seymour, we had continuous service for more than 60 years until the last service stopped in 2013. They had a study done that the airport served 165,000 riders in the last year. But even at that ridership, we had the most costly air service in the country since there were no subsidies of the fares. He stated that their grant was not funded last year because they couldn't meet the 10% match in cash. So they are looking for help from local businesses. So far, businesses based at the airport have offered support. Additionally, Ridgecrest Regional Hospital has committed to $10,000 in support. Scott reports that the Navy is not permitted by law to offer cash support. The airport district is soliciting support from the city, Chamber of Commerce, Child Lake Alliance, IWB Economic Development Corporation, and RACVB. Last year, over 200 people and businesses wrote letters of support for the grant, but it was not enough to cover the required 10% match. So they are again submitting another application for this year. If anyone wants to write a letter of support, a sample letter can be found at www.inukernairport.com and letters can be emailed to scott at inukernairport.com. And if you would like to help with a cash commitment, contact Scott as well. In news from the China Lake High Tech Consortium and the California Innovation Hub for Defense, Energy, and Aerospace, together they are hosting the fifth annual Multi-Use Technology Symposium. 
The event will again be held at the Kermagee Center from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The event will be this Thursday, July 9th. As always, there is no fee to attend. Keynote speaker will be Rear Admiral Matt Winter, Chief of Naval Research. The theme of this year will be Bio-Inspired Technologies and it is already receiving enthusiastic support from NASA and the Navy. As in the past, the event will feature speakers from universities, high technology startups, and government labs. Bio-inspired technology and the research area called biomimetics is a hot topic now. It includes autonomous behavior, guidance, navigation, machine vision, video tracking, algorithms, sensors, cooperative decision making, and collision avoidance, among other topics. To register for this event, go to www.ideahub.org. In news from the China Lake Alliance, they will host a lunch at 12.30 on Friday, July 10th, at the Spring Hill Suites Conference Center. The speaker, again, will be Rear Admiral Matt Winter, Chief of Naval Research. Admiral Winter will speak on the Navy's research program and China Lake's role in that program. He brings a unique perspective from having formerly commanded Naval Air Warfare Center Weapons Division at China Lake and its R&D efforts, and subsequently moving on to oversight of the Navy's overall research programs. Cost of the luncheon is $25 per person. China Lake Alliance members will receive complimentary admission based on their membership level. Please RSVP to Jan Bennett at 760-382-4488 or iwvedc at gmail.com. This must be done prior to noon on Wednesday, July 8th. In local real estate news, here are the most recent real estate sales numbers for the Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. Real estate sales continue at a level but good pace. Total sales reached $4.5 million in May. May sales showed 33 homes sold and there are 34 home sales pending. In the sold homes, they ranged in price from $55,000 to $290,000. There were 8 homes sold for under $100,000. There were 22 homes sold for between $100,000 to $200,000. And finally, there were 2 homes sold for over $200,000. The average sale price of homes were about $138,000. With interest rates so low, now's a great time to buy a home. So that's May's Real Estate Report. Stay tuned for today's KZGN Talking Points editorial when we come back. Now it's time for the 56 KZGN News Talking Points Editorial. Here's today's topic. Should the city of Ridgecrest annex land along its southern border and along South Lake Boulevard out to 395? But first, some responses about last editorial titled, Should Doctors Ask Patients About Guns in Their Homes? Sharon said, My husband and I both were asked by our doctor if we had guns in the home during our last two visits. The intake form has several questions about guns in the home, gun usage like, do you hunt, and several other questions I felt my doctor did not need to know. When his nurse asked me if I owned any guns, I responded, do you own any guns? She looked at me funny and then took my blood pressure. My medical fire file probably now lists me as a potential domestic terrorist. Ken offered this comment. I was expecting that question last checkup, but didn't get it. I would have said, none of your business. And Harry added this statement. It's none of their business. Parents should be aware that their children will also be pumped for firearm information. Be alert. Well, thanks for your comments, folks. Seems no one offered any defense for asking of these questions. I agree with you both, or all of you. It's none of their business. Now on with today's editorial titled, Should the City of Ridgecrest Annex Land Along Its Southern Border and Along South China Lake Boulevard Out to Route 395? Well, at the city's first town hall meeting, Mayor Breeden asked for the public inputs for economic development in Ridgecrest. One of the ideas she proposed was annexing territory along the southern border of the city, mostly comprising of the area along the east side of College Heights Boulevard up to the college. Note that the city border already goes all the way to the south to the college on the west side of College Heights Boulevard. And the proposed annexation also extends along South China Lake Boulevard out to Route 395. Well, it seems this idea has spiked some discussion by people in the affected area. Just yesterday, I had two people come in my gun store wanting to discuss the merits of this idea. One person was definitely against the idea. 
The second person was just wondering about the idea and wanted my thoughts. He was not decided on the idea. Well, I have not decided on a position on this idea yet. I know that there are some people that will not like the idea. As one that has lived in the valley since 1979, I know some people that live in the county area do specifically because they don't want to live in the city. And that's fine. We live in a free world that allows us to live wherever we want. As we go through the process to evaluate this idea, let's have an intelligent discussion of the pros and cons of the idea. Over the years, I have heard many county residents state their reasons for not wanting to live in the city. What I discovered is that some of their reasons for not wanting to live in the city were inaccurate. One reason that I have heard for years on why some folks choose to live in the county is because they don't want to fall under the city's building codes. They like the county codes versus the city's. Well, here's the facts. The city and county building codes are the same. For those that don't know yet, the county is our building officials for the city. The county does all the plan checks, building inspections, and other functions. Both the city and county adopt the state building codes. Local governments can add to the codes. However, they cannot enact any change that would diminish the state code. And for a fact, I know the county has some additional building code requirements that the city does not have. One such building code the county has that we don't is the placement and use of those seat containers. While the city has some basic minimal requirements on the use of those storage containers, the county has real severe installation requirements the city does not have. Another big reason I've heard over the years is this one. I live in the county so I don't have to pay a city tax. When I tell the person that I live in the city and I don't pay any city tax now, they just kind of look at me in wonderment. The answer is, there is no city tax. No one pays a city tax. The only thing we pay that could be called a city tax is the sewer fee. Yes, most of the people pay a sewer fee, or tax as many call it. However, if you lived in the city and are not hooked up to the sewer system, you don't get charged for it. So, if you're on a septic system, and I know there are still some people in the city that are on septic systems, they don't pay the sewer fee. So these are just a couple examples of misinformation out there. There are more. So as we go through the process of, of evaluating this idea, let's use thorough, accurate data in making our decision. Let's not base it on emotion or false information. Again, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but I look forward to more information to come out on the idea. Just remember, the people that will ultimately decide on the annexation will be the people affected directly by this. So if you live in the areas covered by this idea, remember, the city can't just come in and annex your property into the city without your approval. There will have to be a vote with the majority approval. The county will also weigh in on the annexation. When the annexation would have to go to the local agency formation committee, LAFCO for short, for their approval. When I last served on the council, I served on LAFCO for almost two years. They are the final approving agency on annexations. In conclusion, Again, I still have not heard all the pros and cons on the idea yet to form an opinion. However, before we start taking up positions on this topic, let's make sure we are using accurate information in forming those positions. I'm Tom Whitnick, and that's what I think. I'd like to know what you think. If you have any comments about this editorial, or would like to discuss or recommend a topic, I'd like to hear from you. Please email them to info at kzgn.net. Stay tuned for weather and sports after the break. All right, thanks for staying with us. Let's go to Keith for the weather. And thank you, Tom, from the National Weather Service. Showers and thunderstorms associated with a slow-moving frontal system will bring heavy rainfall to parts of the southern plains and the mid-Mississippi Valley, which could result in flash flooding. The heaviest rainfall is expected across parts of northern Texas and southern Oklahoma. Temperatures across the nation, Massachusetts, 82 degrees, West Virginia, 76 Kansas 73, Texas 91, New Mexico 77, Arizona at 104, and Los Angeles at 70. And for our local weather, the highlighted areas in green north of Ridgecrest are flash flood watches, which are in effect until 9 p.m. And for our forecast tonight, 
Mostly clear with a low around 73 southwest wind, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Wednesday will be mostly sunny with a high near 94 south-southwest wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Wednesday night, mostly clear with a low around 71, breezy with a west-southwest wind, 15 to 20 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 25. Thursday, mostly sunny with a high near 90, south wind, 5 to 15 miles per hour with 20 mile per hour gusts. Thursday night, mostly clear with a low around 69, west-southwest wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour, gusts as high as 20. And on Friday, sunny with a high near 91, calm wind, 5 miles per hour. And that is your forecast for the IWV. Now back to Tom and the rest of your KZGN news. Thanks, Keith. Now let's go to Tom Heck for sports. And a very pleasant Tuesday afternoon to everyone. Let's start with the Dodgers. They had a little struggle last night with the worst team in baseball, but they come back and beat the Phillies 10-7, to same two teams tonight. Now with that win, the Dodgers have a five-game lead over the Giants, who are just fading into oblivion. The Giants lost again last night, shut out again last night, by a score of 3 to nothing. the Mets in town. The Giants spent the day traveling, got back to the airport, and went right to the stadium. And uh, after getting swept in Washington, didn't do much better at home. So the Giants, who probably are the streakiest team in Major League Baseball right now, better start putting some stuff together or they're going to find themselves on the outside of the playoffs coming up in, uh, well, we're halfway through in just really about three months. And uh, the Dodgers right now, again with a five-game lead, and there's really nobody else besides the Giants who uh, can give the Dodgers any competition in that West. All right, the Angels, meanwhile, after winning all three in Texas, had the day off. They're in Denver tonight. They'll take on the Rockies. The Angels currently, as we start today, three and a half games behind the Houston Astros in the Western Division. All right, the White Sox, a winner last night. They beat Toronto. Toronto been up and down lately. Minnesota beats Baltimore. The Twins finally starting to play a little bit better right now after getting off to a great start and kind of falling apart this year. St. Louis beat Chicago 6 to nothing. They had a rain delay of about an hour at Wrigley last night. Same two teams today there. Now the Astros beat Cleveland. They play the game in Cleveland 9-4. to Houston has a, as I mentioned, the lead over the Angels right now, but they've lost George Springer for the entire year. He was their leadoff hitter hitting over 300. That's a blow to Houston. They're already a young, young team, and you got to be pulling for the Astros in many different ways. Even if you're an Angel fan, you got to be pulling for Houston to some extent. It's been so, so long since Houston's done anything as far as uh, the win column goes there. All right, Pittsburgh, the hottest team in baseball. They're now 14 games over 500. They defeat San Diego last night 2-1. to one. Pittsburgh, how would you like to find yourself down seven games behind St. Louis, but you're 14 games over 500. Well, at least you'll have the wild card if it ended today. Cincinnati a winner, they slow down Washington, and the Rays and Royals are rained out in Kansas City. Seattle loses again, this time to Detroit by a score of 7-1. to one. All right, look at the NBA. Let's talk money right now because it seems like $80 million for five years is the norm. I mean, that's pretty normal. Reggie Jackson, the uh, star forward for the Pistons, just signed an $80 million five-year deal. DeAndre Jordan left the Clippers. A report from ESPN said that he didn't like Chris Paul, the way he was acting up, and uh, leaves. That's a big blow to the Clippers, the leading rebounder, one of the best rebounders in all of basketball. The Grizzlies signed Marc Gasol, but he gets $100 million for five years. And David West has signed with San Antonio. David West, uh, a very good player for the Indiana Pacers. And David West will get uh, close to $75 million over the next five years. Now, San Antonio has already signed DeMarcus Aldridge from Portland. And he got about 100000 for five years. Aldridge, a great player, NBA All-Star, four times over. Great offensive player, averaging about 23 points a game for Portland. Decided he wanted to leave Portland and try to get a ring somewhere else. 
All right, Wimbledon, fourth round. Serena beats Venus Williams. Sisters battle it out only for the third time ever in a Masters event. Roger Federer wins a number two seed, and number three seed Andy Murray also wins. All right, stay tuned for our Ridgecrest talk tonight. We'll have J.C. Meyerholz, J.C., a longtime sports editor with the Daily Independent here, also broadcast some games back in the day, and he is now in Florida, but uh, he was visiting and we have J.C. Meyerholz. Hope you'll stay tuned for that. That's your sports for this Tuesday afternoon. For KZGN, I'm Tom Hack. So that's the news for today. Office of KZGN TV know you have a choice in what you watch for news. We all thank you for choosing KZGN TV, Ridgecrest's only locally owned community TV station. Coming up next, Ridgecrest Talk.